Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Hallways to Health uh, kickoff call for academic year 2016. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Uh, much of what we'll be doing today is providing uh, a little bit of recap uh, of our work last year and uh, discussing where we're headed this year. So we'll begin with introductions and logistics. Um, then we'll see about what's the plan, academic year 2016 to 2017. And we'll then uh, move into speaking about deadlines and deliverables. Okay. And before we get started with our call today, mm -hmm. just want to let you know when you log in, please write your name. Um, uh, make sure your name is written. And if you are dialed in via computer or logged in via computer, please right click on your name to edit it if you don't see it show, showing up. And also you can use the chat box to answer or ask any questions. And please let us know if you are having any technical difficulties in the chat box. And this meeting will be recorded and posted on Basecamp with the slides. Now all calls will, before all calls, all the agendas will be sent out. So we ask you to reflect um, on the agenda beforehand. Now, the in-person meeting should in-person meeting shows some much opportunity for crossing for cross learning. Even though you represent schools from different levels and states, they all have some things in common. We do encourage you to use these calls as a learning and sharing opportunity to tell us what you have been up to for the last month, any ideas or areas of improvement that you guys made progress on, and ask for any assistance or guidance from all of us. And also outside of the calls, we do encourage you to use Basecamp to share articles, discussions, funding, speaking opportunities, and thoughts or questions you have about um, the upcoming um, process that you're working on. Please let us know by email if you do not have access to Basecamp, because we are working on and it is for all and for school-based health care field to you know, to please mute yourself if you are logged on via computer there is a green phone icon that you can click on and it will turn red that shows that you're muted if you call on the phone just please mute your phone. Thank you. We'll give everyone a moment to just do that. And when we uh, ask for some uh, feedback or participation, you can unmute yourselves uh, and rejoin the call. So we'll allow time for that as well. So I'll just take a moment to uh, do some introductions. Um, as if it's a new, new school year, it's a great opportunity to uh, reintroduce ourselves, um, reintroduce who's participating in this initiative. Um, so I'm Jordana Snyder. That's my picture there on the left. Um, and I'm the program manager for Hallways to Health. Um, the other school-based health alliance staff working on this initiative include Andrea Shore, who's our director of programs. A picture uh, immediately adjacent to my photo, and then Taki Duncan, who is working as a program associate on this initiative, um, whose photo is as next to Andrea's. Uh, participating from each of our uh, yeah. state affiliate organizations include uh, from California Molly Baldridge and Juan Tezan, from Oregon Lori Huffman, from Maryland Asna and Sing. And from Georgia, a warm new welcome to Ruth Ellis. And um, we have some wonderful consultants working with us on this initiative as well. And so I'd like to welcome um, Sarah Geyer Stanger, who will be working to do some research and evaluation for us for the Hallways to Health Initiative, um, as well as Faith Cody, who uh, is joining us from. John Snow Incorporated to help us with thinking about sustainability for this initiative. Turn this up just a 
thing back actually from phone. So please just, uh, we're going to remind you to uh, mute your phone if you are using a cell phone. And if you're calling from a landline um, or logging in through the computer, just to make sure that your green icon, the phone symbol, um, the button next to it. Give you a moment to do that. And that can be found in the Go To Meeting panel and uh, control panel that you see when you bring up your screen. Okay. So um, participating this year on Hallways to Health, um, you guys are the champions of this work and um, are doing an amazing job. Um, and I'm excited to kind of introduce you to one another. And um, you'll see some familiar names. You'll also see some new names. So um, from Roosevelt Middle School, Elodia Villa Senor. And um, from JFK, Bianca Lachal and Daniel Rodriguez. From San Fernando High School, Aurora Chavez. Um, from Hope Clinic, uh, Mary Grafka, and I see Karen Manning is on the phone as well. Um, from Rice Elementary, Renee Brazal. Um, from, from Milwaukee High School, uh, we have uh, currently Christine Kingston on the phone, uh, as well as Timothy Richam. Uh, but Milwaukee will have a new health educator. From Merlo High School, Christina Babaseri. Uh, from Washington Middle School, Mandy LeBlanc um, with a new health educator as well. Um, from White Forest, Dr. Jada Moore Ruffin. Uh, from Wake Forest, a new health educator. Uh, from Turner Elementary, Sarah Trevett. From St. Francis, Pat Sutlow. Um, and from Northwood High School, K so far, as well as another new staff person. So um, I see uh, a lot of you have um, signed in with your name. And so we'll use that to be uh, taking attendance. And um, if I didn't uh, mention your name, just go ahead and um, type it in the chat box. As I mentioned, you can, there are some new um, staff participating in Hallways to Health, um, as there have been some transitions over the summer. So um, it's been uh, great to have some folks at the state affiliate level and um, at the SBSC level come in new to the project. And we want to really thank those who have been a part of the initiative um, from the beginning as well. We look forward to welcoming your new faces and encourage you to connect with your regional and national Hallways to Health peers as resources and partners in brainstorming, planning, and welcoming your new peers to our cohort. Okay, so um, just as we are ending and wrapping up our summer of 2016, I know that some of you had some time uh, to reflect over the summer. Some of you worked on some a wonderful summer programs for your students and for your youth. Um, and so I just wanted to ask if we could get a few summer highlights um, from your field. It could, it could be personal or it could be uh, related to the work that you're doing as part of Hallways to Health. So um, we'll let you um, just call them out so you guys can unmute yourselves and share your summer highlights. But please introduce yourself beforehand. Hi, this is Aurora from um, San Fernando High School. Um, just the summer highlight that we did um, this summer for the Summer Bridge Program, we were able to partner with Educare, which is one of our partners at the high school. And we um, successfully were able to implement the NICARA Institute's Stress Management Technique course, which was like a five lesson plan. And at the end of the week, the Dodgers, which is like the baseball team in Los Angeles, um, they donated 170 tickets for us to take them all on a field trip to a game, which was really cool and exciting. Oh, that's really fun. And I know that we mentioned the um, Molly baldrick Plaza training and introduced the Nagora um, Institute at our uh, midpoint meeting. So that's awesome that you're using that. How did the students like, like the training? They liked it a lot. Um, at the first lesson felt kind of strange. 
they were like, you're asking me to breathe. <laughs> but towards the end, they all seemed like really excited and like the different poses and stuff. And um, a lot of them seemed like a lot because it was like a transition into high school. So um, they were able to like that they can then use now that they're students here. Great. Thanks for sharing, Aurora. Anyone else? Hi, this is Bill Klatz from Merlo Station High School in Beaverton, Oregon. Hi, Bill. Thanks for joining us. And we're in the pro we just finished the transition for our medical provider for our school-based health center, and they will be starting with us um, next week when our students return. And one of the one of the highlights of our staff in service this week was we have built in uh, as a basically a requirement that five to ten minutes of each uh, each day's homeroom period is built into mindfulness and meditation, which is what we started last year through our all school training that was that was funded through our uh, hallways to health grant. So we're really excited to see that work continuing and bring that systemic systemic change to our school through the through the grant and it's really going to help out our kids and staff. Yeah, wonderful. That's a great way to um, kick off the year and to train your staff beforehand. Thank you so much for sharing. We'll take one or two more. Um, this is Kay so far from Northwood. Um, we were finally able to meet with our principal over the summer and one thing we have been working on since the beginning, um, she decided to take out the candy and soft drink and chip machines in the high school. Despite oh. the, yeah, that that is actually going to cost her a lot of money because they, the school money, because they get profits, of course. Um, the other thing is that we won another grant um, to teach uh, mindfulness meditation to students, not just here, but in all four county high schools that have wellness centers. So it's spreading outside of just Northwood. So that was another thing that happened during the summer. And um, a suggestion that I made to her, which uh, to the principal, so we have a grant uh, that's being run by the doctor at our wellness center to teach mindfulness meditation at four county high schools. Um, and the third thing that happened over the summer is I had made a suggestion to play music during the cha class changing times, and the principal was not for it at first, but I came in and yesterday, by George, they're playing music. <laughs> Um, and I don't know about the kids, but I'm certainly booging to the music. Um, four or five minutes of exercise at the change of classes. That's great. That's awesome. Congratulations, Kay. Um, we'll look forward to hearing more about the uh, mindfulness and, and if the music sticks. Mm -hmm. the students. Just trying it. It was also the idea was to get the kids to class on time. So we'll see if if the music. If the music um, continues or not, we'll see. That's a great idea. And also a really great example of how hallways is, uh, and, and your work is uh, thinking about not just the clinic itself, but really into the halls of the school, into the transitions, into the classrooms, and beginning your, as um, Bill said, beginning your year with professional development, um, and uh, even as Aurora said, continuing into the summer. So these are really great summer highlights. Thank you so much for sharing. Did anyone take any trips that they want to talk about, or any um, any good uh, reflecting that they had uh, by themselves about their their work? Jordana, this is Laura Chandler from Hope Clinic in uh, Newport Mesa. Laura, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, you know what, I did want to share because it's very exciting. Uh, Mary Graska and Diana Reed worked the summer and they took on the maintenance of the vegetable garden at Ray and it looks fabulous. This is the first time that we've started off the school year with an awesome vegetable garden that has produce and it has beans and um, 
Pumpkins, pumpkin, squash. zucchini, squash. It's a live garden, and the area is well maintained. And the principal even had her mom plant some plumeria stalks, I believe. I have to go look at them, but to me that is huge because the principal is also getting her family involved in the garden. So um, we are definitely making breaking ground here with connecting with administration <laughs> and um, moving forward. This is the first time this school year that we've been able to start off looking really well on that end. That's incredible. I know I was the, the garden's beautiful. I, I thought when it didn't even have anything in it. So and um, <laughs> it'll be great to, to share some of those that produce with your students and for them to come back and see what a um, what a great living garden and diverse garden looks like. Yes, awesome. and you know what? And Marianne and Diana also enjoyed the the tranquility of working in the garden, the mental <laughs> wellness aspect of it, of just actually being out there and uh, working the ground. So um, we've got them more on board with this as well. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, well, that's a great segue. Um, we just want to um, show you a quick video to kick <laughs> off our kick off our fourth year in Hallways to Health um, and then just frame the importance of the work. Um, it sounds like you guys all have a really great handle on that, but um, just to uh, show you that we're part of this larger initiative called the Kaiser Permanente Thriving Schools Initiative. Um, and so we just wanted to show you a video about that and um, can reflect on all of those great things that happened over the summer um, and as the school year is beginning um, as you watch the video. Kaiser Permanente Thriving Schools is a comprehensive effort to create a culture of health and wellness for students, staff, and teachers in K-12 schools. Our work is focused on providing greater support for healthy eating, active living, school employee wellness, and positive school climate. In partnership with other leading national organizations, Thriving Schools seeks to make a measurable impact on the health of schools so that they can be a force for promoting the health and well-being of all schools. 20%, one out of every five members in Kaiser Permanente, that's nearly two million people, spend their days in school, five days a week, nine or ten months of the year. It's one of the most important settings that they spend time in. If that's not a healthy place, they're not likely to be healthy. The in schools is um, particularly strong and impactful because it reaches out and touches, of course, the students and the faculty, the teachers, and the people who work at the school. But also, of course, the community is almost always very involved in their local school. So the environment of the school and the programs of the school ripple through and can have a positive impact on everybody in the community. Schools are one of the most important institutions in a community. They help shape the values and the behaviors that people have. They're places where people get two meals a day, sometimes even three. They're places where physical activity is either taught and supported and ingrained as a lifelong behavior, or it is not. So they shape the trajectories of people's lives and behaviors for a long, long period of time. Actually, I have a daughter who teaches, uh, who's in her third year of teaching math in the inner city schools in North Philadelphia. And um, you know, we're really proud of her, and actually when you're visiting her, um, you really wind up getting a concrete sense as to how important school environments are. And you also get the sense about how constrained resources are. And when an organization like Kaiser Permanente and our partner organizations can bring their resources and just add a little bit of resource and usable tools and usable models, the teachers and the people and the students can make them come alive. Driving schools is an expression of our commitment to total health. What does total health mean? Total health means we're concerned about mind, body, and spirit. All of those take place in a school environment. This isn't a project that gets done and we're successful and everyone
becomes healthy in a school. These efforts aren't programs, they're commitments, and they're going to last for a long, long time. That's the only way we'll be successful. So I think the great work that's been done by the people who have created thriving schools, both within Kaiser Permanente and outside Kaiser Permanente, um, I'm really so grateful for what they've done uh, and for the impact that we're having both to benefit our customers and our members and to show what great organizations do in helping build strong As the video showed, uh, this work is really important to uh, student health as well as school employee health. And uh, we just want to take the time really to thank you for all of the hard work that you've put in um, on Hallways to Health over the course of the time thus far, and specifically last year. Um, and we're looking forward to all the great things that you're going to continue to uh, bring this year. So um, as we think about just uh, what the year will entail, um, you know, we'll ask you to continue to, to think about what's doable in your realm, um, realizing that um, the funding for the initiative is reduced and, and it is less than it was last year, um, but that you're still um, kind of thinking about what, what priorities you have for your students and um, making sure that you feel empowered to prioritize those efforts and initiatives which are most important to your students. So um, as we begin today, this is our first monthly learning collaborative call. Um, and these calls, as we started today, will um, have some sharing and they will have some training. Um, the collaborative calls give us an opportunity, as Nataki said, to see the larger impact of our work. It's a national pilot effort with some really great outcomes, um, including successful school-based health center integration with your schools, as uh, Laura Garcia mentioned, uh, working with the principal, and Kay Sofar mentioned, and the principal taking on some suggestions, and even a vice principal, Bill Platt, even being on the phone with us. Um, so, as well as increased care coordination for your students. And although you represent different schools for different age youth in different parts of the country, you share a lot of similar um, challenges, a lot of similar vision, a lot of similar um, similar strengths. So um, we also want you to, you know, really share your ideas with one another. Last year, you spent time assessing your student and staff needs in your school. This took a lot of time, and it was new. And it was challenging. And you as health educators and vice principals um, and school-based health center coordinators, you advocated for it. And you made it happen. And you shared the results, start great discussions with your school district and school leadership. Um, over the course of last year, you surveyed 622 school employees at 14 school-based health center sites. You surveyed and did needs assessment for over 4,800 students. And only and 13 of the 14 schools completed student needs assessments, uh, which incorporated looking at the social determinants of health um, for all of your students. So those are amazing accomplishments. <laughs> and it took a long time to get there. And we really want to thank you for your efforts and know that, that those needs assessments and will continue to drive the work that you're doing. So you use that information to strategize and to prioritize approaches to improve the health and wellness, not only for your clinic patients, but to think about how to reach more students and expand your efforts outside the clinic. This year, you'll continue to implement both those student and school employee action plans you created last year. You'll continue to work on healthy eating and active living, social emotional wellness, and school employee wellness in both of those areas. Uh, we at the Alliance will be providing training on how to help you sustain this momentum and these hallways to health efforts. Along this implementation, uh, we're here to support you, to highlight opportunities for you um, to 
such as funding, opportunities to share your stories, um, and resources from other hallways to help sites and from other organizations. We'll provide technical assistance uh, through calls uh, together with your state affiliates, um, through working with us individually, and some of you will also continue to work with um, American Public Health Association. The reporting will continue as it, as it was last year, um, and that will happen quarterly, uh, with the ultimate goal being to pass policies to support health promotion and prevention for your whole school population, and using the quarterly reports as a place to track that progress and movement towards those intended policy changes. And of course, those will help us share the lessons learned with, of this wonderful initiative with the school-based health center field. And in that vein, as your work continues on the ground and thinking about how to reach more students and how to sustain these efforts, uh, we at the Alliance will be working on a really cool toolkit which will live on the Hallways Health webpage on the School-Based Health Alliance website in order to train other school-based health centers on moving beyond the clinic walls to serve as a legacy of the work that you've been doing um, and, and the lessons that you have learned. So as I mentioned, um, we'll, we're here to support you and your work. So if there are things that you have questions about, or if you're looking for a resource on a, a specific health education topic, or looking for a training opportunity, or a funding opportunity, or a, um, present, a an ability to share your stories and your work um, with local news agencies, with uh, folks in the education field, uh, we will be happy to help with those efforts. So our support this year will include, you know, developing and delivering sustainability training that will happen over the course of the year. Uh, we'll, we'll respond to and update and modify um, these trainings and contents based on your needs and feedback. We'll provide individual technical assistance on other uh, questions, whether about um, reporting or um, thinking about ways to move beyond the clinic wall or ways to monitor or evaluate policy change. Um, we'll share resources and opportunities with you, and we'll disseminate and share your lessons learned and achievements with the school-based healthcare field. We'll also provide you with additional training and opportunities for storytelling and sharing. Um, and we'll, as I mentioned before, do that through highlighting upcoming webinars, conferences, and blogs which are relevant. As we started to discuss last year, policy is one way we can sustain your hallways to health work as it institutionalizes your efforts. Can I get a volunteer to define what policy and system change might mean with regard to hallways to health? Um, this is Pat Setlow. I think the policy uh, change that something that we work towards and implement it continues in the program, um, continues in the school program, even separate from the clinic, that there would be um, a, a general change of the school policy regarding a health issue or a cultural issue or a social issue. Great, that's a great definition, Pat. Thank you so much. Anyone else want to add anything to, to what Pat said? And what could be the benefits of um, thinking about your work not as a day-to-day -day, uh, program, um, a health education class on bullying or a health fair, but viewing your the body of your work as a whole and moving towards policy and system change. What does that allow you to, to do for your students and your student population in terms of that reframe from program to policy?
I think the biggest thing um, it frames is that it creates maintenance so that um, the program doesn't isn't really dependent on that one educator that's there, but if there is maintenance and if there is a policy change, then if that educator were to leave the company or the school, that program would still be maintained within the school itself. Absolutely. Thanks, Aurora. That was a really great answer. Um, absolutely. So, so both what Pat said and Aurora said. Um, and over the last years, you guys have taken on a really large role in this um, in the school-based health center world, and it's been uh, really innovative. Um, and you've uh, organized groups of uh, of people to be on a wellness team, and you've thought outside the box. Um, and how your clinic and the folks in your clinic um, can be utilizing those other resources and partnerships within the school, within the community, um, in order to um, maintain the initiatives that you've started. So we want to continue to promote that. So um, just want to note that you know last year we trained on this framework that you see on the screen. We talked about um, steps towards getting to policy change um, and addressing each one of these components. And over the course of the year, um, it began with assessing needs and then uh, identifying the policies through the action plan that you wanted to address. Um, we noted that policy change takes time. Uh, it takes patience. And we recognize and want to just reinforce that change can be slow and incremental. Um, policy change is definitely harder to see in the short term as opposed to a programmatic kind of outcome. Um, but the relationships which you've been building have been uh, to these ends. So, so the, the change that Kay mentioned within the school within her school about the vending machines is an enormous step towards a policy where that's not going to be a part, where unhealthy vending machines aren't going to be a part of Northwood in the future. Um, and so that will hopefully, uh, you know, not outlast K at your, at your placement, but um, hopefully it'll be part of Northwood's uh, mode of operation. So you guys have done a really wonderful job taking this on. Um, and and taking on this like reframe of of the work that you were doing as a part of Hallways to Health Part One, um, and so we're going to continue to ask you to think about framing your work in that lens. So I just wanted to revisit this slide that we shared last year um, to give some examples of what we feel is policy change, policy and system change. Um, so, as I said, one key element of sustainability is uh, to have written documentation of some of these policies uh, so that, as Aurora said, everyone who touches the, the SDHC is aware of them. At the end of the project, we will ask for these to be uh, shared with us so that we can share them in our toolkit um, and we can share them with the field. Um, so part of those policies, those policies include MOUs and LOAs, with schools, district, community partners, and other student support services and parent groups, job descriptions for school liaisons, for health educators, um, and sometimes even um, SVHC coordinators at FQHCs, um, new protocols and procedures, referrals, handoffs, follow-up, care coordination, consent, uh, screening, um, new structures and teams which have been created through Hallways to Health. So advisory meeting, cost teams, wellness teams, um, and changing a new educational curricula. So what Bill mentioned, he, he is um, including in every day for the students five minutes of mindfulness as a part of their um, homeroom or advisory period. And um, that's a policy change um, that uh, addresses the curriculum of the day and built into uh, built into the structure. So just on this slide, you see two examples. One is um, Milwaukee High School's workflow, mental health, um, with their referral and follow-up. So if, um, that's, a, that's a little bit more of a clinical policy, but um, if you, know, you don't have something like that and you were looking to create something like that and that linked with one of your other uh, larger systemic policies, that would be a great thing to create. Um, and there's an example from Merlo Station on uh, tracking health education and visibility. So if there's a commitment to track that um, 
and a commitment to have 10 health education seminars per year um, that would be tracked and um, made sure that it was in accordance with the policy. Great. Um, last year we shared with you the action plan templates and uh, you filled out the action plans three tabs. The first tabs were assessment and analysis and the third tab was about system change and policy. So you used your information to get to uh, the policies and systems that you wanted to change. We're really excited to frame all the great work you've been doing uh, in, these, in these terms because it, it, it kind of talks about more impact than um, we had a health fair and 50 kids came. But we had a health fair that was about this and we, and it fit into our policy on this. Um, is a larger example. So for instance, if you're working to introduce breakfast after the bell across the school, clinically screening students for food insecurity would help quantify your student need and doing a school-wide health fair to increase awareness on and enrollment in local community food resources and services such as SNAP and food banks uh, would provide opportunities to help reduce food insecurity outside of school day. So our goal is to help support you in telling your story and highlight the great work you've been doing um, and the impact on your school. So this is, I wanted to share with you um, something that we created at the end of this year um, to share all the things that you guys have been, been doing um, kind of in this language. So these are just some samples um, and we'll share this document after the call. Um, but take a look, you can see St. Francis added one professional development each day, each year, to enriching staff wellness and identifying strategies to reduce and manage stress. Um, Bill spoke about um, the mindfulness piece that's going to be required daily in, um, in their high school uh, based on the data from last year's mindfulness pilot. Uh, Turner Elementary updated their district wellness policy, or are in final phases of getting that approved, I think, Sarah, <laughs> and to include all, all of their students having 20 minutes of recess a day, um, and, and their food being sold to students meeting smart snack guidelines, as well as uh, no food is a reward. So um, I know that some of that is still uh, being voted on formally, but that's an example of um, updating your school wellness policy to include some of the things that you're working on. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a new policy. It could be uh, just changing the language to be more reflective and more preventative in nature. And lastly, um, at HOPE, we're talking about um, expanding and implementing the Fit Club model to uh, two additional school sites. Okay, you might want to add something about um, expanding mindfulness to other school sites as well. I'll pause for just if anyone has any uh, questions or comments, you can write in the chat box. And we'll answer those as we go. Okay, so the, the second piece of our work this year is going to be a little bit new, um, and it's something we started um, at the midpoint meeting and something that we've been thinking a lot about is how to sustain the work that you're doing as part of Hallways Health financially. Uh, we recognize that each site will be defining sustainability of the Hallways Health work in their own setting and their own context. For some sites, it, mean, it may mean the federally qualified health clinic absorbs financial responsibility for some components of the Hallways Health work or the health educator. For other sites, it may mean health payers agreeing to reimburse for population health services after tracking health education services and determining how many patients are their members. For other sites, it may mean finding local organizations to share the work. We know that grants come and grow. So this is a really unique opportunity to have time within the grant itself to think intentionally about the body of the hallways to health work and think about which components are the most valuable, who you want to share it with, how to do that, and how your FPHC can continue to do this type of work. The training that we'll be providing and exercises that we'll be providing will be transferable to all of your grant-funded work. 
Um, so we'll take regional meetings to, to, um, to focus on sustainability. So some of those will be in the fall and some of those will be in the spring semester. And uh, there will be opportunities to meet with local stakeholders, um, kind of um, just following you know, uh, our training from the midpoint meeting where we focused on identifying stakeholders and creating messaging platforms which are appropriate for them. So we hope that this will also help you to increase the visibility of the initiative within your school, within your community, and within our school-based health center field, and within the field of education, uh, to public health, and to payers. Really excited about that body of work. We'll just check the chat box and see if anyone has anything, any questions so far. Okay. So, um, that's an overview of the, of the next year um, and just a little bit more practical. I sent out a calendar with the deadlines and deliverables for the year. Uh, and just to note, if you don't already have them on your calendar, uh, the calls will all be on Tuesday afternoon from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And agendas will be sent one week before and reminders will be sent the day before. Uh, the calls will focus on, as we've mentioned, thus far, leadership, communication, and sustainability. And uh, September will largely be focused on regional meeting planning um, and watching some of the sustainability training at your own pace. So in addition to the PDF calendar, which I sent, uh, we will be sending out Outlook invitations for each of these calls, um, as well as Basecamp. The Basecamp calendar has the dates of all of the calls and all of the call-in information. Just let me know, um, you know, kind of in advance if you're not able to make any call or if you can't appoint someone to uh, sit in for you. Okay, and then other deadlines and deliverables um, include reporting. So the first quarterly report will be due on October 17th, School Based Health Alliance. And the second will be due in January, the third in April, the fourth in July. The reporting structure, again, will talk about what movement you're making toward policy change um, and what you've um, improved on in the past quarter, what you've struggled with, um, and some really great areas of success as well. Um, if there's also any technical assistance needs you know, that you have, um, you can use those you can use those reports as an opportunity to do that. Um, so invoicing, uh, the templates will be provided on email and Basecamp and will be um, associated with uh, two of those reporting dates as well. Um, technical assistance includes calls and email. Uh, regional meetings will be scheduled, as I mentioned, for the fall and um, in Georgia and California for the spring. So Georgia and California sites, you'll look out for those dates a little bit closer. And our endpoint meeting will be uh, June 18th, again on a Sunday adjacent to our convention held in Long Beach, California. And, and just to note, um, some upcoming deliverables um, um, include the staffing plan and budget, which I sent out over email, uh, as well as the first quarterly report. So. We'll, we will be providing the template for the first quarterly report in September. Um, and just make sure to turn that, to complete that, um, and turn it into your state by October 3rd, two weeks prior to the date it should be turned into us, so that you can turn in a, uh, a draft to them and a final copy to us. And lastly, you can use the early part of this year uh, to end your calls with your state affiliate to make sure your student and school employee action plan reflects the policies you're currently working towards and the building blocks and steps to support movement towards those policies. It's for your own working purpose, but if, if the alliance doesn't already have kind of an, um, a plan of where you're going, just make sure that we have that as well. Does anyone have any questions? That was a lot of information.
This is Bianca. I'd like to get more update on the regional meeting in September, please. Sure. So for the California sites, the California regional meetings will actually look a little bit different. Um, and um, I think we'll talk a little bit about that on the call that we have with the California sites um, in next two weeks. But that will be in the spring semester. Yeah, Bianca, this is Molly. Um, I sent an email out regarding yeah, that. Yeah, now I was just thinking again. about that. Yeah, we're going to do the conference call. I forgot about that. That's right, great. and um, you can set up a call with me separately if you have any specific questions about that or agenda items you want to add. That's fine. Any other questions? Uh, with that, I'd just like um, a few sites who didn't share in the beginning to um, share with us what you're most excited for in academic year 2016-2017 for your school-based health center, students, your school, or your community. Does that include me, Dr. Jade, at Whiteford? Yeah, go ahead. Um, at Whiteford, we'd love to hear what you're looking forward to for academic year 2016-17. Well, first of all, I'm looking forward to a new dynamic in, uh, health educator to assist us with continuing to lead this great initiative to, to the next level. So that's the first thing that I'd be excited about. But I um, am looking forward to really just continuing to engage the school community as well as um, continuing to maintain the momentum that I feel that we've quickly built with uh, the buy-in of our school's uh, leadership, which includes the assistant principal who was able to attend the national conference this year. I think that uh, that was really icing on the cake for her uh, aha moment and how great this would be, not just for Whiteford Elementary, but uh, I think we have an internal champion within the school system that can uh, continue to champion these efforts within the district, especially, as you mentioned, looking at policy changes. So being an additional support to the teachers, I think they really valued the, um, just the, the attention that they've gotten to their needs and how their uh, overall social emotional health uh, impacts and influences the students that they serve. So we are looking forward to completing our, for um, uh, lack of a better word, uh, sanctuary, if you will, or the relaxation room within the school um, that, that we have uh, started. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, we, yeah, it was a pleasure to have um, a member of your school leadership uh, join us, as well as um, I guess a student who an alumna, alum of your school as well. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Jordana, this is Laura again. I am super excited because there is a um, almost a fifty percent uh, changeover turnover in school staff at Ray Elementary School, and um, so I'm I'm looking forward to working with new staff. They they look all young. And um, we had in, and that, um, we had introductions uh, yesterday, and we heard a lot of personal um, interests and hobbies involving exercise. And so I, I'm looking forward to um, talking to them on following up on Friday to get um, some ideas as to um, how what they would participate in, you know, their interests. Um, and again, so every year is kind of different in establishing that staff wellness. Um, piece and but it seems like we'll have interested uh, staff also our school is turning in um, will be an avid uh, magnet school and also um, the way they um, have designed special ed they'll be pushed into the main general ed classroom so there will be a lot of changes on the campus of Ray and I I am hopeful to um, capitalize on that um, to provide staff wellness and connect more with the staff itself. 
Yeah, that sounds like a great opportunity, and I love your um, enthusiasm about uh, a new a new staff and new energy and and new folks to partner with um, and to think about um, how to meet their needs as well. That's great. And there's also um, more buy-in from us. The administrator is looking to us to actually make her transition more successful also. she's So now she, um, we're looking at more of a leaning in to us, um, kind of an approach from administration and welcoming what we have to offer her staff to make them successful. This whole transition is huge. So um, interesting how things develop, huh? <laughs> That's re that sounds really great. I, I keep us updated to how that goes because um, it definitely sounds like a it's team effort there and of course your work in doing staff wellness is um, is intimately linked with um, the happiness of your staff and uh, the success of your staff at being able to teach. Mm -hmm. That's really that's really great. Exciting. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, hi, this is Pat Setlow. We are um, we're really excited. We do have new staff too and we have new policies in place and things in school itself. Um, tomorrow is orientation for all the teachers. They have had um, teachers and staff, they have had uh, orientation for new teachers, but we're presenting them with their wellness book that we developed and it's going to be in a with some goodies that have the clinic's name and number and stuff on the front of it, lanyard top. So we're very excited to start the new year off with more people being involved and invested in in the clinic. That the information not only says what we can do for them, but what they can do for themselves and how they have access to the faculty lounge and to the um, and to the gym and to the weight room. We're very excited about that. That's awesome, Pat. I would love to hear how it and. Um how they have the new staff receive the orientation packet, and, and you know whether whether or not in the beginning of the year they uh, they're using it. <laughs> I know it's busy time. Great, thank you guys so much. Um, these are these are really wonderful um, hopes and um, excitement for for the upcoming year. Do we have one more person who was going to share? Did I cut off? No. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. As I mentioned, after the call, we will send out the policy outcomes, which we um, wrote up from, from what you submitted to us from storyboards from last year, as well as quarterly reports. And um, I look forward to hearing from you if there's any additions to, um, to Basecamp and whatnot. And otherwise, we'll look forward to seeing the Maryland sites all together for the regional meeting in September and for the Oregon sites um, for Oregon and Washington sites for your regional meeting in September and um, and look forward to our other calls. So thank you so much. Have a great afternoon and a great beginning of the school year. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.